What's going on guys, Victor here, and welcome to Florida Mini Season 2020. We got a pile of lobster, we actually just caught our limit. So if you guys wanna see how we caught them, how we're gonna clean them, and then how we're gonna cook them, stay tuned. Today's a really special day, especially for Brooks' family. Brian, this is like his favorite holiday of the year. We got everybody on the boat, Brooks' brothers, Brooks' brothers' girlfriends, Jed, Candace, everyone's here. Let's get in the water and catch some bugs. All right guys, we are cleaning house. It is turning out to be an excellent mini season. Got a bunch of big ones and it's always nice when you don't have to question the one that you measure. And you cannot neglect any rock or coral head. Like we found one coral head that we've easily pulled out a dozen lobster out of. Cause they'll, they'll be all the way up in it, upside down, backwards, every way, which way you can imagine. So I'm just gonna pop a fresh battery in the GoPro and uh, let the bugs keep rolling in. When we catch the first two, this rock is so deep. When they see their friends leave, the rest of them that are left will start to shoot further and further back into the rock.
All right, guys, so we just got out of the water. Textbook perfect mini season. Last year we did this, and um, I don't think we got our limit, but we had six licenses on the boat today, so we're able to keep 72 lobster, and we got some studs. There's a lot of times where you dive and there, you have to question and measure a lot of the, the lobster, but we got so many good quality ones. I mean, just all nice two, three pound bugs right here. And uh, safe to say, we're gonna be eating good. Brian's gonna make his world famous ceviche. We got some lobster bisque coming up. Brookie's gonna whip up some Alfredo and special announcement coming at the dock for you guys. Brooke has never made this announcement before, but these are the nets that her family has been using for the last like decade or more. You cannot find these in stores and she's finally starting to sell them. So I'm gonna have all of her stuff linked below. You guys can email her. I'm gonna have it linked up here and that's where you guys can buy them. These are a freaking game changer. Look at this, cooler full of lobster. We got our limit of 72, and I think every single one except maybe two was caught with this net net right here. It, and they're all handmade by Brooke. She literally puts her heart and soul into every single one. It's made out of acrylic, very high quality, so I'm going to have it linked below. And uh, she also has a YouTube channel if you guys don't know about that. I'll have that link below as well. Check it out. I'm going to show you guys how to process your lobster. I'm going to be using this guy to make bisque. So. I'm gonna take the tail off. This is the traditional thing to do with a Florida lobster. One hand on the carapace, one hand on the tail. Twist it. That's what you're probably accustomed to and that's what you'll see in a restaurant 99% of the time. Florida lobster tail. Just get it started right there. So I initially filmed this where I cut the lobster down the, uh, down the head half with the knife, but I think that's probably a lot more dangerous for people and this is a lot more user friendly. So I just cut right at the joint of the two uh, first legs right there. And now you can pull that apart. So now, here are the gills, and there's still a ton of head meat in here. This is the leg half, this is the head half. There's a bunch of guts in there, there's a ton of meat in there. All I'm gonna do is rinse both these out, and then you can use this for your stock. There's still so much meat in the head, the knuckles, the legs. Highly recommend you guys eat your legs when the lobster get bigger. And um, since we're just going to be making uh, a lobster bisque with this and we're not doing a clear stock, I am going to leave the gills in there, but I am going to take the guts out. And then this guy right here, your tail, what you do is you take the other end of an antenna, of a lobster antenna, you go in the lobster's butt right there, there's a little opening, and they have backwards facing spines. You go halfway up, you pull down. So now what that antenna does, it has those backwards facing spines and you're able to pull the intestinal tract from the inside out. If you try to pull it from the head half out, a lot of times it'll get stuck. The proper way is to pull it this way. We got a bag full of carcasses, tails, knuckles, carapaces, which we're gonna boil down, make a good stock, plenty more to go. I'll catch you guys in the kitchen. Okay, so Brookie and I are busy at work. She is prepping her lobster tails for her Alfredo. And then right here, we got a basic mirepoix of uh, two parts onion to well, double the amount of onion as you have celery and carrot and equal parts celery and carrot. I got a big stock pot over here full of olive oil just so the bottom is full. And we're gonna sweat our veggies first. Now that our veggies are sweated out, so they're not brown, translucent and nice and softened up. Three cloves of garlic, whole cloves going in, a couple of sprigs of thyme from Brooks Garden, and I'm not taking the leaves off because right now we're just making the stock. What I'm gonna do is, since I wanna have a lot of lobster stock left over for future recipes like paellas and jambalayas and stuff like that, I am going to make a lot of stock, strain it so I just get a nice clear liquid free of the stuff, free of the veggies and everything, and then I'm gonna make an actual lobster bisque after. So now I'm just adding about five or six bay leaves some whole black peppercorns. So a very basic stock, almost resembles a chicken stock. Now we're just gonna start to add all the bits of the carcass with the leg and the head and there's all this meat in there and that's really gonna cook down and kind of dissolve into the water and just really flavor our stock. And I'm just gonna try to fit basically as many of these shells and legs in here as I possibly can. Because the more you put in there, I think the less you're gonna have to cook it because you're essentially producing a stronger stock with more than you would, you know, with less. Whereas if you only had two or three, you would really have to spend a long time to cook them down. Lobster legs 
Florida spiny lobster legs don't have a ton of meat on them. And I'm gonna show you a really neat trick on how to get the meat out. I'll go on one side of it, and I'll do that along the entire leg. I don't want the joint in my cut, and I'll show you why in a second. So now if I would try to roll pin these legs out with the joint in there, they would just get stuck. There's no joint, it's just straight leg. Do it about halfway, you don't need to roll it all the way out, otherwise you're just gonna smush it, and then you slowly pull it out. That one had a little bit stuck in there, and then you just pull out this little bit of cartilage. And I want the legs, when I go to plate the soup, I wanna try to get all fancy for this video. As that stock dwindles down, I want it to reduce it by about a third, not quite half. I'm pulling the carcasses out, the legs out, and I'm just pulling all the meat out. Like, I'm not, I'm not taking that, that's the gills. We don't eat that. Any of the white meat, like their heads are full of white meat, the same as the tail. A lot of people think it's better than the tail meat, and that's all the stuff that you're missing if you wring your lobster and just throw the tail away. So after about, I don't know, two hours, we reduced it by about a third. I got a, a strainer right here, just some quart size cups, and I'm just straining it through the strainer, making sure I don't get any bits of lobster or shell or celery. I just want all that flavor in our stock. This is gonna be the main flavor in your lobster bisque. And you can freeze this stuff, which is great. We have our mirepoix again. Onion, carrot, celery going in. All right, so I added just a little bit of tomato paste to our celery, carrot, onion mixture. And now I'm going to deglaze with some sherry. You can't make lobster bisque without sherry. Helps if you take the lid off, doesn't it, Brooke? So we'll let this go for a couple minutes until that reduces by about half where you're not smelling the really, really strong wine flavor. So now we're gonna add some of our lobster stock. We'll do about that much. We're gonna hit it with the immersion blender in a second here too. Everybody's got a little bit of lobster. There's the beautiful bisque. Nice and velvety. I wanted it to be a little bit thicker, but I should have done a roux from the get-go. Look at that color. There we go. How about a little bit of that action? That looks good, doesn't it? I already Brick. finished. There we go. <laughs> Brooke and I just sat down. Everyone's got empty bowls. I think they kind of speak for themselves. <laughs> What'd you guys think of the lobster bisque? Delicious. Really good. Oh, amazing. All right, guys, we had an absolutely amazing mini season with Brooke and the fam. And I'm sure you guys could tell we didn't do our like normal review dinner type thing because we were all so tired. We, we basically all woke up at 3 a.m., dove, went straight to the kitchen, made ceviche, made a bunch of dishes, but that's what it's all about. And one thing I wanted to touch on, which Brooke touched on in her video, 72 lobster might seem like a lot, but it really isn't. Lobster is something that freezes really well, and mini season is when you load up the freezer. Um, and we we aren't even loading up the freezer. We no. ate like, well, a we didn't eat catch? all, but we cooked 40 lobsters yesterday, including the ones for the ceviche. We make a giant bowl of ceviche that lasts probably like five days or so. So really we're only putting like 30 in the freezer, which is nothing, especially no. for all the people we had on the boat. No, not at all. Now, one last thing. I gotta talk about the nets a little bit more. I kind of briefly touched about them. Brookie, tell everyone just like what goes into these nets? Well, my neighbor came up with the lobster net design and we've been using these for over 10 years. So he's the one who came up with it and he gave us some to use and he was selling them for a while and then I recently took it over because I had so many people reach out to us from watching our videos saying that they've never seen that net before. So I decided why not try making them so you guys can have them too. And they work so great. It might seem like something weird, but once you try it, you're never gonna wanna go back to a different net. Everyone asks like, why is your net so great? And there's a few different things. One, it's basically clear, so they can't really see it. The majority of the time, you put the net behind them and put it on top of them and they have no idea what happened. Another thing is it's shallow. So it's so shallow, like, 
The normal nets are deep and have like a big netting to them. This is shallow because when you put it on top and you grab them, you'll see in like, I'm sure you've seen it in the video, you can easily take your other hand and pull it right out of the net and you're not struggling to try to get that lobster out. When we free dive and we find a lot of lobsters in a spot, it's like go, go, go. Like they're coming out, they're moving all over the place. So you catch one, you want to get it out of the net so you can go right back down and catch another one. You don't want to fumble around trying to take your lobster out of, out of some deep net because they got spines all over them and those spines get stuck on every single little piece of the net, the antennas, and with this, it's easy to get them in and out of the net nice and quick so that you can catch more lobsters. Um, I don't know what else I, can I say I about know, it. I know what I can say. So one thing you guys probably saw in the video is the shape of this net, um, it's very narrow. Big, normal aluminum lobster nets are huge. They're tough to work around, the netting gets stuck in the rocks. You guys saw in the video, there are plenty of times where you're trying to net a lobster between two rocks right. or in a slender space where there's no other net on the market like this. And we're not trying to be salesmen, but yeah. you know. I mean, like if you think about it, you hear us talk about different products and videos all the time for other companies. And finally, we have something of our own that we're selling, so why yeah. not tell you guys about it? And. I mean, I'm not making you buy one. I'm not saying that whatever you have or whatever you do is better than what this is, but if you're just interested in it, you've seen it being used, then let us know. Well, send me an email at brookiechrist at gmail.com if you guys are interested in purchasing a net, and then I'll tell you guys how you can get one. So this is our first announcement, basically, that we're selling them, so. That's it. <laughs> they're made with love by Brooke, and they'll never rust because they're acrylic. So, I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys haven't already, subscribe to Babe over here. I'll have her channel linked below. And we'll catch you guys in that next video. See ya!